Okay, I'll start with a brief overview uh, of the in-command system to begin with. As you probably know, there's several different stations. Uh, this is uh, the actual operating station or the uh, control center, as they call it. So he's pretty much running the entire scenario, but he's also reacting to what each individual station either radios and requests or does. So if we need to uh, enhance something, uh, make the fire larger, make it smaller, bring other people in, bring boats in, anything like that, then he'll be at the control center and doing that. Um, for today, I'm going to be at the, uh, at the Incident Command Center, which is going to be here. This is my joystick and my controller so that I can move about uh, where, I, where I'm at in the bridge. And then we'll be doing radio back and forth. We have the radios, we just don't have them connected for this demo because it, it gave us feedback and stuff for, uh, uh, for, for actual uh, clarity. So we're not using the radios, but we'll be demonstrating them. Phil is at a station. Uh, in this case, it'll be the, for fire. It'll be the station for the fire. And then there's a third station here, which is for the police. Uh, and we'll, Phil's going to have to switch over to the other position because of, uh, uh, we, didn't, we lost our other guy for the, for the police for today. Um, also, uh, you probably know there's, you can have like up to 12 different stations. So everybody can get involved with it from administration to police to fire to military, whoever you want to bring in to the, uh, to the scenario. So Russ is going to start us off. He's going to give us a dispatch. Uh, we're all starting in our cars. Uh, I'm in the truck. Phil will be in his fire truck. And then he'll give us a dispatch, and we'll start into uh, the scenario and then just try to start reacting from there. So, Russ, if you want to go ahead and take off, let's see what we can do here. Uh, BC1, I copied. I'll be en route uh, from downtown. BC1, go ahead. BC1, um, I'm 97 now, I'm on the bridge now. Uh, that is confirmed. There's uh, multiple vehicle collisions on the bridge itself, uh, as well as I can see smoke and fire from the cruise ship. BC1, you have uh, engine one, be advised to go up the wrong way on the bridge, go up the eastbound lanes. There's no access coming up on the westbound lanes. Okay, the fire truck's there. Command BC1 uh, copied that. Um, also, uh, break dispatch. Be advised the news media is already on scene. Uh, do we have a helicopter available? Command, go ahead. Command uh, copied that. Uh, also be advised, we're going to need the police here as well. There's a couple of them on the bridge, but we need to clear the bridge. Chew, Phil. Engine one, uh, go ahead. Uh, BC1 copied engine one. Uh, BC1 brake dispatch. Um, it looks like we're going to need another engine company uh, come up on the same way on the bridge. We're going to need an additional water supply for engine one. Command to uh, Hilo one. Uh, we're going to put six 
BC-1 confirming uh, there's people jumping from the ship in the water. Uh, BC-1 copied. We're going to need uh, a res some rescue boats in the harbor. Uh, do we have any fire rescue in the harbor? BC-1 copied. We'll, uh, we'll take that, that boat. Copy Marine 1 responding at this time. BC-1 to command. I really need some uh, ambulance up here on the bridge. I've got people actually, I can see that they're uh, visibly wounded, uh, probably from the collisions on the, on the highway. Do I have anybody available? Uh, BC-1 to uh, Marine-1, are you still there? Marine-1 is here. Hey, can you guys help me out? What do you, uh, what do you see now? Marine-1 is still responding to the area. Okay, roger that. Just advise when you're in the area. BC-1 to uh, dispatch. BC-1 to dispatch. Um, is there any way to get a hold of the cruise ship? Do we have any contact information? I believe they should have a fire brigade on board. Okay, roger that. And also, um, is there any more uh, like people jumping from the boat? Do they have any ability to let the people know the boat's not sinking? Okay, copy that. Marine One, go ahead. Marine One, we copied that, and also uh, break dispatch. Uh, BC-1 to dispatch. We're going to need additional rescue boats. I think we need to uh, somehow try to block the harbor. Do we have that ability? We need to block the harbor of those other boats coming in with people in the water. Uh, BC-1 copied that, 10-4. Good. Yeah, so we're going to stop action. Yeah, let's, let's stop action for right now. Okay, so uh, what you saw was some interaction, but the critical part was that we all saw our own view because of the individual stations. So when, we're taking, when the event is taking place, that's not really when the learning is, is happening. The, the power of simulation training is in this after action review. When we step back to the uh, different positions, and we start asking questions of why did you do what you did? If you had it to do over again, what would you do? So we're going to start with Russ to start off. Uh, since he's on the uh, operating station and he had the, uh, the, the basic control center started moving things, he would start asking myself questions as the incident commander. And it would be such as, And see, my response to that is, well, I can't see the structure of the bridge. So I might say something like, well, how come the helicopter didn't call that out or somebody that could see it? I don't know that if Phil could see it. I apologize, Phil had to go actually go to work work. Uh, so he's left. But, but we would have a conversation back and forth because, remember, I only see this. So I want to know what they saw and what they did so that we can work, work together better. Would be 
Right. So I don't know if you noticed, but I, I was a little bit flus frustrated at the time because I, I wanted my I wanted my services there faster <laughs> because I had already arrived and there was people that were injured and I wanted to help them, but at the same time I had command and control. So had I gone over and started helping the people, I, I don't think that would have been an appropriate response for the incident commander. Uh, even on the fires, I don't think that would have been the, I still need to hold my position even though people are yelling at me. So that, that's the way the system does is it kind of brings that out uh, as far as the timing. Now, we could have ran this thing for, for 30 minutes or an hour or four hours because it just continues to continue to continue to continue. In this case, uh, today we ran it short just to show because of time, we, just to show how the system works. If we move over to the fire truck, uh, we noticed, and you guys might have picked up on this, but the pumper went up to the bridge and parked right up next to the fire. We went directly to the fire, which is what fire does, but the problem was we didn't bring any other water with him. All he has was the water in the pumper. So sometimes in these scenarios, we will intentionally put them in a position that we want them to recognize is not a good position and we want them to already be thinking about, well, this is not gonna work because I'm gonna run out of water in two minutes from that truck, so I need another water source. He was late in calling the water source, I thought. So in an after action review, I would be like, did you think about this when you were driving up? All you had was the water in your tank and it's only gonna last so long. So again, it's this perspective of this is the only perspective that he has. He doesn't have the 50,000 foot perspective in the case like what I do. Um, with, the, with the boat coming in, we had, uh, uh, well, we had police driving a boat. So I don't know if that works that way in your country, but they're just gonna be throttled down all the way in, making it all an emergency. And they literally would be was driving right past the people in the water. So again, they're conflicted because they have the overall view. I'm calling for an overall view of what's my situation. But then they're saying, look, we got people in the water. I got to rescue people. And I'm saying, go all the way around the boat and try to figure it out first and see what, we're, uh, what we have to work with. So you can see the interaction that begins to develop with the system. But the, the beauty of it is, is that we're literally isolating each individual rather than watching one big video, we're isolating each individual and allowing them to react to what they see. And then later on when we step back, you get the overall picture and people begin to say, ah, I understand why you were doing that and why I was doing this. So that's really where the learning occurs is in that. We build scenarios that aren't always correct because things in the world aren't always correct and that's how the learning occurs is sometimes we put people in situations and then they react backwards on it. 